YouTube and welcome back to another episode of CJ's Cosplays. So, in my previous video, I spoke briefly about how I had a lot more content coming out in the next couple weeks. Here is the second episode. Uh, sorry that, you know, I got a lot of bright light going on right now. I really don't have studio lights or anything. This is kind of, you know, brand new for me, so uh, I'm just dealing with it as best as I can. But you guys really don't care about the lighting. What you care about is what the content of the video is. So today, we're going to be talking about something very near and dear to my heart. One of my favorite characters from the Marvel Cinematic Universe, as well as Marvel Comics, and that is Star-Lord. Now, Peter Quill is, in my opinion, just the coolest dude in the galaxy. He is a dork, he is a dweeb, he loves to dance, and he just is awesome in my opinion. And I identify a lot with the character of Peter. So, what we're going to do today is look at another white cheap leather product. As you might remember in my previous video, we looked at the white cheap leather textured stretch fabric Captain America suit. Try saying that three times fast. White cheap leather textured stretch white cheap white cheap leather cap doesn't really work out too well. So, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna look at the white cheap leather Star-Lord jacket, and we're gonna look at all the previous Star-Lord jackets that I bought before then, because I went through about four different jackets until I settled on the white cheap leather one as my main jacket that I use for cosplay. So I still have a bunch of the jackets that I went through, and we're just gonna look at those and pretty much do a comparison video of what is the best Star-Lord jacket you can buy. Now. I'm going to start out by saying what I think is the best might not be what you think is the best. You might just want something that you can wear to a Halloween party, something that you can just put on on a rainy day or something just to look kind of cool and have that, you know, Peter Quill inspired outfit. But we are going to look at the different varieties in Star-Lord jackets that you can buy and the different quality products that you can purchase from, you know, various overseas companies. So, without further ado, let's get to it. So, here we go, folks. We're going to start off with our first jacket, which I actually purchased off eBay in 2014. I believe that was when the first Guardians of the Galaxy came out. So, this right here is a replica of the first Guardians of the Galaxy jacket that Peter Quill wears. So you can see it's got kind of the basic structure. Now let me start out by saying that this jacket is a 2XL, which fits a size 50 chest. I actually used to be a lot bigger, for those who don't know. I lost about 85 to 90 pounds a couple years ago. Uh, so I really had bought this jacket with the intent of being Peter Quill, but I let my weight and a lot of other things affect me cosplaying as a character. Now, to start out, I'm just gonna say, folks, if you wanna cosplay as a character, just go and do it. It doesn't matter if you don't look like Peter Quill or if you don't look like Michelle Pfeiffer as Catwoman. If you feel the desire to go and do it, don't let anyone tell you that you shouldn't because cosplay is about having fun. The key word there is play. It's costume play. It's having fun and doing what you love and portraying a character that you identify with. So if you want to do it, go and do it. Right off the bat, you can see how much bigger this jacket actually is on me. Uh, he doesn't really zip it up in the film, but just for the sake of seeing everything that uh, this jacket has, we're just going to zip up the front. You can see it's got a lot of, you know, the same shapes and everything that are in this, um, that are in his jacket. It's made of faux leather, so very plasticky. Uh, one of the biggest issues is that this right here is uh, a brass buckle. Now, on the screen use jacket, it is a nylon web buckle. Um, and this jacket I purchased before the film even came out. So there weren't a lot of great screen caps and, and everything to work off of. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's not bad for the money you pay for it. It doesn't have the printed uh, triangle uh, texture that's on the screen use jacket, but that's also because uh, <laughs> there's no way that you're gonna get this. I think I spent around $85 on this when I first got it, when the first movie came out. Here's a look at the back of the jacket. Uh, like I said, this came out years ago, so I'm sure that the jackets that are made now from Volume 1 have improved 100-fold. And actually, right now, we're going to take a look at another one of those jackets. So, here we have the Manless Best Star-Lord jacket from Volume 1. Again, this is made out of faux leather, and this is really more constructed as a costume piece versus a jacket. So the difference in the previous one is that that was made from a jacket company. I think it was... 
film jackets or film replica jackets or something like that, but they're all pretty much made the same. This is lined with some satin and it's just really crappy faux leather. Um, it's great for a costume piece if you just want to walk around. I had bought this when I first decided that I was going to get more hardcore into cosplaying as Star-Lord. And I wasn't really worried about it being as accurate as much as I just wanted to do all the looks that he had. Um, so, uh, give you a little up close view. You can already see in terms of, you know, the nylon strapping, this is a, um, like canvas material, but it looks more screen accurate. The color is not too bad. The fit, this was made custom fit to my measurements. Now you can buy this jacket from Manless Best. I actually was fortunate enough to win this in an auction, brand new, custom made for $21. So there was no way I was gonna pass up getting this and to do a review for you guys and to show, you know, everything that there is to it. So it fits me like a glove. As you can see right here, it actually has a close approximation to the patch that is on Peter Quill's arm. The other jacket did not have that. And then right here, in place of the valve, it's just some, you know, faux metallic leather that's on there. If you want to go for something that's really cheap and you can get it around for, I think, $40, on eBay right now, I'll put the link in the description. Forgive me if I'm wrong. Um, and you're just starting out and you want that volume one look, this is not a bad option for you. You can go in and you can do some detailing. You know, um, I had, maybe I'll do a customization video on this to see if, you know, I can make this look a little more screen accurate. If that's something you guys would like, please leave a comment below. Um, but yeah, so this was the jacket from Manless Best. It was around, it was $21 for me. I think you can buy it new for around $40 to $50. Not bad for the money, but now we're gonna get into a little bit more of a screen accurate look. So right here, I'm gonna take my hat off now because it's not very uh, Peter-like to wear the hat. My hair is not Peter-like either, but. Now this is the Danny Lupez um, replica volume one jacket. It is made out of real leather on the sleeves and the detail work and now the material right here is all um, like lined with leather but then in front of it is I think it's a canvas material and it has the screen printed texture onto it. Um, this I got on a trade from a good friend of mine named Scotty. I will leave his Instagram below. Um, great guy awesome cosplayer one of my favorite uh captain america cosplayers and just all around real nice guy has the sickest hawkeye i've ever seen also um but we did a trade off for this and um i very much dig this jacket uh i have not yet worn it to a convention because i still want to spruce this up a little bit it's very red that's my only issue with it in the film it's much more of a maroon color and then up the back it actually has a bleaching effect where the bottom starts out as kind of an orange and then it bleeds up to the dark at the top. But to go in and show you a little bit of the details here. Here we have the patch. As you can see, the patch is uh, the correct colors. Uh, it's not exactly the correct size, I believe, but that does not bother me at all with this. This jacket normally de uh, this jacket normally retails for around $300. I'll put the link in the description where you can buy it from Danny Lopez. Um, it has the nylon webbing, which stretches, and it just kind of has that great, uh, almost aviator-like fit. You know, it starts right here, so that way you can see the belt, and it, it, it's just great. It's really comfortable, it's really soft. Here we have the valve which, um, again, I do not believe is as screen accurate as possible, but for me and my needs, this was just as good. Here we have that leather detailing that we saw in the other one, but just really embossed into the leather, and it's just a great look and uh, a great fit, in my opinion. Um, I can't wait to wear this at a convention, but now we're gonna step aside from volume one, and we're gonna look at volume two. Now we are switching it up a little bit. When I bought that other manless jacket from eBay, from Volume 1, I also purchased the Volume 2 long trench coat and had it made to my measurements. Just because I, I like the look of the trench coat, I don't love it all the time in the film, and I didn't want to spend as much money on a trench coat as I did on his Volume 2 short jacket. Now, I absolutely love this jacket. It's purchased for around $111, hang on, let me fix myself here. 
$111 custom fit, all made with faux leather. Biggest issue with that is it doesn't breathe. But the detail work in this is still pretty freaking great. Um, just to let you know, I did go in with some black shoe polish and uh, some brown acrylic paints and I just wanted to rough it up a bit, make it look a little more dirty and have more of a textured look to it as it would actually in real life. Along the bottom you can see a little bit more of that detail work. I wanted to do some fraying and stuff, but um, it's very flowy, it's very comfortable, um, it sweats a lot and that's a big issue. Uh, a big plus was it came with the communicator, which is not the right size, it's actually a lot smaller and it has a little diamond. You know, so now Starlet's got some bling on him, which I kind of dig, to be honest. Um, but, hang on, let me fix my hair. Got my hair going all over this video. Oh. Um, but for around $111, if you're going to go for a trench coat look, um, I honestly would recommend this to anybody. Um, it looks pretty great. Here's a look at the back. It's got the buckles on it. Um, and it's just really comfortable. I sweat, you sweat a little bit into it, but the biggest part that I love about this jacket is that it has the little uh, detail right here, which he also has on his short coat, which we'll get into in a minute. Now, I do not have this on my short coat, but again, for $111, in my opinion, this is the best trench coat that you can buy for around that money, and I would recommend this to anybody starting out as Star-Lord, or even people that have been doing it for a couple of years and just want the trench coat just to have a different look to it. I think it works great. Um, so now we are going to get into my personal favorite Star-Lord replica jacket from White Sheep Leather. All right, here we have it, folks. The White Sheep Leather Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 Star-Lord replica jacket. I cannot say enough good things about this jacket. Now just to let you guys know, I did a lot of airbrush work detailing. I had never used an airbrush before, but I bought it from Amazon and thanks to the help of Rick Rosa and uh, Charles Aerosmith, who are two incredible Star-Lord cosplayers, um, I really was able to make this jacket look a lot better in my opinion. Um, I can put, I'll put a photo here of what it looked like when I first bought it, and another photo here of how it looked like after uh, painting it. Um, my one issue that I had with it is I did not let the layers dry between coats. So to this day, seven months later, the leather pieces are still tacky, which is annoying, but really doesn't bother me since it looks as awesome as it does and it fits me as well as it does. Um, the suit, uh, the jacket is made out of Cordura, which here right there. I'll do some close-ups right now to show you guys how it looks. Uh, the pin I got off eBay. Um, now the interior part right here is uh, still the light red. I have to go in and darken that because Peter Quill's uh, lapel on the inside is much darker in the film than it is like this. It's not the same color on the outside. But that was just a little detail that I figured I'd get to eventually. Um, this jacket, again, is so comfortable. I did not go with the stretch fabric because I didn't want to spend the extra money. Having said that, there is a little part of me that wishes that I would have gone with the textured stretch fabric because it really gives a more three-dimensional look than this does. Up close, this looks fantastic, and it looks fantastic in video also, but the texture on the stretch fabric really looks very similar to how Peter Quill's jacket looks in the movie. Um, once again, this jacket cost me around $200 when it was all said and done. Uh, custom fit to my measurements. I could not be happier with it. I'll show you guys some close-ups of it uh, when I have a little bit better lighting and um, it really just, I, I can't say enough good things about it. I'm, I'm speechless when it comes to this jacket and the craftsmanship and work that White Sheet Leather puts into their apparel and their replica pieces. And there you have it folks. That was the review of the different Star-Lord jackets that I have purchased in my time cosplaying the character, which has been only a year. The first time that I cosplayed as Peter Quill, which you can see right here, was at Garden State Comic Fest in 2017. And here's the most recent photo from Wizard World Philly in 2018. Now, really the only difference in me cosplaying this character is my knowledge of 
you know, the world of cosplay. Knowing the different, you know, replica prop forum as well as the Star Lord uh, uh, cosplay Facebook group, which is a big help, and all of those guys on there are so so knowledgeable of this material and then just you know finding the different websites and sellers and everything from all these different uh, makers and it just it, it is so overwhelming and so much to learn that you know it, it was only inevitable that I would have to start out somewhere you know where it was more comfortable for me in the bank as well as what I knew about the character and what I knew about his costumes and the world of cosplay you're just gonna start out at a different level than you are at the end now I am nowhere near the level of a lot of these really great cosplayers cosplayers <laughs> great Star Lord cosplayers out there and I'm cool with that because it is a learning process and I'm just here to share with you guys what I learn as I go along and you know learn a lot from you so once again thank you so much for checking out this video. I'd really appreciate it if you could leave a like, comment, and subscribe to my channel to see all the new stuff that I have coming out. You can follow me on Instagram at cosplay underscore CJ, and just any feedback that you guys have, I would love to hear. So, please let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see in future videos, and I can't wait to see you guys next time. Stay super friends.